Hey everyone, it's Luke from Luke Place Earn, and today we are kicking off our Splinter Lands 101 for Silver and Bronze Strategy. Now I realized I do a lot of finance videos about Splinter Lands, and I feel like I should do more strategy ones, which I know I do in my live streams, but sometimes, you know, people don't like to scroll through an hour or two hour long live stream while I'm talking to chat to also explain strategies. So for these types of videos, it's just gonna simply feature me playing different games post and pre battle so that you can get my thinking on both sides of the analysis and hopefully learn something for yourself. Some of these will have a theme and some of these will just be the best battles that I can pick out from playing in silver and bronze. Hope you enjoy, let's get started. Hello, Kamusta ka, como estas? Bonjour. Hello, how are you guys doing? Today we're gonna to be playing some battles in silver too. Right now we just have a 1700 rating and if you want to follow along, I really don't have that many cards, but let me show them to you. Essentially, my rental strategy is just rent the power. I have reward cards that I have won through playing the game. Other than that, I'm just renting a few neutrals and other cards, but not really that many. So you can see here for the fire deck, this is what I'm renting or own and play. Here's what we're going to be using as far as water deck. Earth, I have hardly anything, maybe besides Wood Nymph. Life deck, here we go. Again, not too much there. Here's the death deck you can look at. The dragon cards we have. Neutrals that we have rented or bought. And then your standard summoners, except for renting Bright and Bloom, Delwyn, and Oster. All right, let's jump in and play some battles and try to analyze them. All right, so the way I'm thinking about this is usually I check out what are the rule sets here, and then I check out what is their team. I look for what do I want to play, but I also look for do they have any overpowered cards that I can't match and that I need to counter. So for instance, Earth deck, he's using Mylor a lot. I don't have Mylor, so we're going to have to think of a way to probably avoid melee. And then for water deck, even though my water deck is powerful, he has Torhilo, plus he's got Cornelius. So this is going to be a tough battle, but because of Poison 99, what we're going to need to do is find monsters with lots of high HP and probably a monster with healing as well. So I'm imagining here that they might go water to counter me and go Cornelius to heal, or maybe they'll try to use my lore and just keep the unicorn alive but wood nymph is going to die early so i'm going to assume he's going to try to counter my water deck because i've been using water a lot as well but i still think this is my best strategy because oshaunas has 10 hp i can use captain's ghost now we're not going to use our other typical water deck cards especially waysmith because they're going to die in two rounds because of the poison Although you could argue maybe the armor is good here, so let's put them in and just see for now. What I want is put Sea Monster somewhere in the middle because Sea Monster is our hope to win this match, to survive through all of these poison hits and just heal up and last longer than their team. Then we can look for other good cards with high HP, so maybe like an Axe Master. And we still have tons of mana because this is 99 battle, so we can also put in Gelatinous Cube who will heal up through Scavenge. And then we're going to put Sea Monster in the middle again to try to keep him alive as long as possible. So as long as they don't have a bunch of sneak attack, Sea Monster should survive pretty long time. And you could argue to put Cube behind him or you could argue to put Cube ahead of him. It's hard to say, but let's battle this out and see if we get the win here. All right, so let's analyze this strategy. He did end up going for Mylor instead of a heavy Bordis, you know, magic counter team, although he does have magic reflect, so that's going to hurt a bit here. Uh, he does have a lot of sneak attack, so luckily we did bring armor so Axe Master doesn't die in one hit. What else he's got? And then he's got Cornelius, so we didn't really think about, you know, could we added Sandworm instead of Axe Master to attack their backline and hurt Cornelius? Although Cornelius would probably just heal up from that anyway, so... Really, this battle is probably going to come down to Sea Monster versus Cornelius, although this heavy uh, Magic Reflect plus 4 damage is going to be pretty strong against O'Shaughness if O'Shaughness gets hit by that. 
We could be in a little bit of trouble, but Poison's going to kill off these three guys in a couple rounds. Same with, uh, you know, Axe Master and Wavesmith. So we can speed this up to see how it plays out. He's got up the reflect. Luckily, the two armor is going to help, except for it got shredded there as I said that. <laughs> Magic reflect means Ocean or sorry, Wavesmith is going to die pretty quickly. But you can see Gelatinous Cube to heal up through poison is going to really, I think, come into play here. It might just come down to a Cornelius versus Sea Monster battle, and at that point. If he's in first position, he's not going to be able to hit us with ranged attacks because he doesn't have close range shots. And so I think we should end up winning this Sea Monster versus Cornelius. And we're going to get a couple more shots off here. But you can see really my poison strategy is yes, these guys are going to die, but Sea Monster is still full health as we get to everyone else dying off. And Axe Master should be able to kill off both of these right here as long as oh there's a return fire forgot about that so now we're gonna have the awkward waiting period of uh poison cornelius versus uh cube so we can speed this up because cube is not going to do anything this is why i was considering putting cube behind sea monster so that sea monster could do damage while cube stays alive but now we're just gonna have to speed this up until it's sea monster versus cornelius there we go but again, Sea Monster is going to do 4 damage to Cornelius. Cornelius isn't going to do anything. So while Cornelius is great to have the heal for poison, if Cornelius gets to the first spot and you don't have close range rule, well, the thorns actually might hurt me. I forgot about thorns here, so we still lose. Oh, it's going to be so close, but we're going to lose because of thorns. Bummer. <laughs> okay, so I, I totally forgot about thorns there at the end. Hmm. So I think the only way I could have won this battle, maybe the difference maker, is if I did put Q behind Sea Monster. Maybe Sea Monster does enough. No, Sea Monster still would have killed himself even if Q lasted longer. Q would have died off anyway. So it was a close battle. You can see that was a, a very close call there. But Mylor did end up winning because of Sea Monster. You know, maybe. We could have argued that if we had put in the ranged, I'm forgetting the name right now, the ranged attack self heal character instead of Axe Master and kept him alive, that would have made a lot more sense. So I think that's an error on my part overlooking. We could have had double heals with, what is, what is that card called? Water Elemental. I can't believe I forgot Water Elemental. So if I put Water Elemental in behind Sea Monster and kept Water Elemental alive, then coming down to that last fight against Cornelius, I think we would have had enough damage to possibly win that out and not hurt ourselves through thorns there. So mistake on my end, maybe that one could have changed the battle. But as you saw, Axe Master did a lot of damage as well. Maybe we could argue we could have put in Water Elemental instead of Cube because really the Cube didn't tank that much up. Everyone else died by the time the Cube got into first place anyways. All right, let's get a battle going here. Again, we want to check out what are the rule sets. No healing, equalizer, all monsters are going to have the same amount of health. And then we want to check out, do they have any OP cards that I need to worry about? He's going to be able to match my Oshanas. So we got to think about that. And Axe Master, he does have the Gorladon, which we don't have. So that death deck could be powerful here. So with equalizer being the rule set, we really want to play low mana cards with low health. And hope that he uses a card with high health, boosting all of our monsters' health up to a high amount. So he does have Ulster and Ancient Lich, so that could be a strong combo for him. I gotta watch out for that. He also has Heartclaw, so he has a pretty good death deck. Normally I try to go a lot of magic damage here, but because he has a pretty strong death deck, I feel like we gotta counter it with a lot of attack damage. So again, we were looking for monsters with low health, hoping that he puts a high one in. So Cockatrice becomes a good tank with flying if he gets more health. Ant Miner, same things. He could scavenge up a much more health. Miner will be able to stay alive for quite some time. Serpentine Spy is a pretty powerful one because if he gets, you know, five, six, seven health with the opportunity and high speed he has, that's pretty great. Same thing with Uraeus and Elven Cutthroat. I'll put Uraeus in the back line. If he has a sneak attack, he'll absorb at least with the one armor. Ant Miners as a second tank if he can scavenge up. 
This might be my best bet, although I'm not super help. I'm not super hopeful because he has a pretty strong death deck, but this I think is my best way to counter it right now. Okay, so he did end up going with death deck and putting Harclaw in, which means all of my monsters get nine health. So you can see with the equalizer, you want as many monsters as you can get in there. Even with a low er mana battle like 18, you can tell that by just this setup, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to win because he's not gonna be able to snipe any of my melee attackers. I'm gonna be able to shred through his backline with all my sneak attacks and opportunity. He put chicken first, and I'm not even gonna really be able to kill the chicken that quickly. So by the time it gets to Harclaw, we should be tearing through his team, and really all the skeleton assassin is gonna do is tickle Uraeus, but we should be able to honestly get through Jester and Skeleton Assassin before he, I think, can kill off Uraeus. Meaning we should have a lot of attack left over for Harclaw. Now, I am a little bit worried if Cockatrice gets a hit off. Actually, we want the Elven Cutthroat to get a hit off first so that our Opportunity guy will hit Twisted Jester. I think he might hit Chicken first, so... We might get to Harclaw a little bit sooner than we wanted, but I'm pretty happy with this setup. You can see because of how many monsters I have now with 9 health, Thanks to him putting Harclaw, even Co Cockatrice at, you know, this garbage two mana card at level one becomes a pretty powerful tank with flying now with nine health. That's pretty great. So you can see there, uh, I am going to get less attacks because of, mm, I didn't think about that. Okay. We actually still might lose this because with the minus one melee, the only person that's going to be able to do damage to Harclaw is my Serpentine Spy. So we literally have to get 12 hits off. Um, so that was a mistake by me. I should have put one more monster with a 2 damage attack at least, knowing that he was going to play Death Deck. To be fair, I thought he was going to play Owlster and try to do a counter to my magic. So uh, you can say that was a mistake on my part, maybe. Serpentine Spy actually might be able to get a, quite a bit of hits off because Harclaw only has two damage. He's gonna have to get through Ant Miner and through Call of, uh, the the Miner here. Cobalt Miner, my bad. So you can see this is a very long drawn out fight and I actually might <laughs> end up winning this after all. I think my mistake in this thinking is I should have known with his powerful death deck a minus one melee could have been possible and him putting Harclaw in, that was an oversight by me. So, you know, I could have put in something with at least two or three attack as well up front, but I was just thinking about trying to get as many monsters in with this equalizer health. So luckily I still win, even though most of my <laughs> characters can't do any damage, but that was a close call. That was almost a, a big oversight that could have lost me that match. All right, even Stevens, one of my least favorite rule sets just because, you know, taking away half your cards in the deck is quite the bummer. So you can see here, he's got two leveled up decks, but only one of them can be used. So he's probably gonna end up going death. You see, he's got some heavy range damage in the back line, so We gotta watch out for that. But it doesn't look like he has a lot of magic reflect. Plus even Stevens means we can still use Mr. OP from our uh, water deck. We have to be careful because we lose the Wavesmith here, so we don't get the extra armor. So that is a bit unfortunate. I am also concerned about the heavy range damage that he has for us. So really what I want to do here is... Hmm. I think I just got to go full magic damage and hope... And hope that he does not end up... Yeah, we lose our heal here as well with the even Steven. So that sucks. So we just got to put it in a lot of front line and hope actually what I'm going to do is just double double down on. No, I can't. Okay. Yeah. Help initiate. So I'm going to double down on two front line, just no attack tanks so that our back line can hope fully take him out. If he ends up going death deck with no magic reflect, we should be able to tear through his front line before his heavy range attack damage kills both initiate and cube. If he goes sneak attack, we're screwed. If he goes snipe with the death deck, we're fine because O'Shaughness will be able to tank up a few shots here and so will cube. 
But if he goes sneak, that is where our team is weak. But I didn't see much sneak attack. Okay, he actually went life deck here. So we predicted wrongly here. Okay, so now he's smart. <laughs> he did end up thinking. So we were trying to counter his best deck and he was trying to counter our best deck. And what we could have done is tried to counter his counter, but he didn't really show any signs of playing the life deck here. So this is just a good counter by him. I think with only the one heal, maybe we have a chance of taking down Clay Golem because we're still going to do quite some damage. And as I said, he didn't do any sneak attacks. So we actually may have a decent shot. If we can get a kill here before he gets the heal off, that would help a lot. There we go. All right. So you can see our team was weak in the... A sneak attack, he didn't end up using any sneak attack, and luckily for us as well, he didn't go double heal on the clay golem, which probably would have helped him. So even though he countered our strategy, we still ended up winning. I don't take that as a strategy outplay. I think that's more of a misplay from him because if he was trying to really go counter our magic deck here, which is what it looks like he's trying to do, I, if I was him, would have gone for double heals because double heals would have potentially kept the clay golem alive. Now, maybe he's thinking, oh, you know, maybe I don't end up using full magic. Maybe I use axe master and stuff like that. But because I went full magic damage and he only had one heal on the clay golem, even with void, these guys are more than enough to take him down. All right, very high mana battle, this time only with life or earth. Heavy hitters doesn't really matter at level one to me. So he's showing no earth. We have to be worried always when there's earth deck about my lore. He's not showing my lore, which doesn't mean he doesn't have them, but is less likely because a lot of people like to use my lore. He does have Lorna shine, so that means... If he plays Lorna, that means, you know, it's going to take some time to get through those divine protections. So I think our best strategy at high mana at just our level one cards is always going to be life deck and doing the double heal situation here. So we want divine healer. We want Venari crystal smith. And then because we have so much more mana, let's just put in some great cards alongside that. Maybe not great cards, but high mana cards. So we got... Sandworm, we're going to get Dejin in here. You can make an argument that maybe we should take out Divine Healer just for the sake that we have so much more mana, but I feel like the double heals are going to be important here. And I'm a little bit worried that he's going to shred through Shield Bearer at some point, so maybe we put Goblin Mech, but the thing about Goblin Mech is that he doesn't have that much health. So what we could do instead is instead of using Tyrus is to use Kala, get the extra HP so that they can heal up even more. Put Dijin back in, Sandworm, and put Goblin Mech in second in case Shield Bearer goes down. That does leave our backline pretty vulnerable, but again, this is playing without a lot of great cards here. All right, so he does end up using Lorna Shine. That's not too surprising for me. He's got the taunt in there as well. He only has one heal in there, so he elected to go for, instead of a double heal, to take out and put Silver Shield Knight to give his attackers extra melee damage, which is going to be... Hmm. It might be a good play. I think with his Divine Protection and all that, he probably is going to win this. I'd be surprised if I'm able to win it. We won't go triple speed. Let's just go double speed here. Maybe the double shields keep us long enough, but with the sandworm having six attack, I don't think we have a decent chance. Plus, I get a miss there, so that's going to seal the deal. Yeah, you can see we're already... <laughs> we're already probably at a GG here because sandworm's now going to attack our sandworm. If I didn't get that miss, maybe... Oh, okay, maybe we still have a chance. His Sandworm killing our Sandworm is gonna be pretty detrimental, though, because now it means that our Crystal Smith and our Divine Healer are all just gonna die right away. I don't think... If those two could have stayed alive long enough to take down the Eagle, 
maybe we have a chance, but now with them both dead, we are indeed going to lose this game. I don't know if there was really anything I could have done too differently. Maybe you could argue Goblin Mech secondary tank wasn't needed because he couldn't really do much from the second position trying to shred through shield bearer so yeah i don't know i mean he just has leveled up cards and had lorna shine yeah what are you gonna do all right 17 mana with enraged every time i see enraged i'm thinking what is a monster i can use that has a high attack and high speed so that when he gets hit He's going to get even more attack and even more speed to dodge out more shots. Now, close range is in play, but I think because of Enrage, we're probably going to go more melee damage there. He can't use his powerful water deck, so all that we get to see from him is Malric fire deck. So what we could do to get more speed is we use Pyrie. We could also use Bloom to get flying on top of an enraged monster that has high speed. Could give us a lot of dodge chance. You can see fire high speed is Phineas, but doesn't have any armor. He does have high health, so that is a good option. Death deck, usually one that has high speed is Nightmare, but that is eight mana. So let's say we ended up going Bloom plus Death and Nightmare. That would only leave us with five more mana. Is that what we want? We can also talk about using Chihuahua. He doesn't have high speed and melee, but the thorns themselves could counter if they use enrage and even with nightmare dodging a lot of shots if they use thorns we could be in trouble because nightmare could die out pretty quickly there so instead i think chihuahua is so powerful even though the enrage isn't as great on chihuahua i think it's still a good idea here and we could do something like a fire elemental will give us the blast damage or we could go Spark Pixies with six speed, or sorry, with five speed, but we already have flying with Bright and Bloom. So I think Fire Elemental here is going to be important instead. So let's try this. I'm a little bit worried only having two monsters in there, but it is a low mana battle. Hard to say. Can we make it work? Let's try it. All right, so they're going with a life deck here. So let's see what they end up playing. Clay Golem, I think maybe he thought I was going to use magic damage, but I mean, uh, the water deck wasn't available. So I'm a little bit interested on that. Maybe it's because he wants the melee damage to go increase, but only with the one speed, that's not that great. Maybe you could argue if I did play Nightmare based on what he played, I could have won this game just on having the high speed of Nightmare. I'm a little bit worried because the Draven Wizard is going to be able to take out my Elemental. So it's basically all up to Chawada to win this game or not. He does have the Creeping Ooze in here as well. So that's going to help him quite heavily. So you can see the Thorns are pretty strong there though. And that's going to take out their tanks. Actually, that keeps me alive with my backline because now this wizard is going to have to face Chawada. So I think we actually win just because of that. Yep, you can see it play out here. He's going to get one more shot off, but now his Peace Bringer is going to do uh, nothing. Woo! Okay, well, close range, maybe. Hello? Okay, we get the miss there. <laughs> he got a miss on us and then we got a miss on him. So... That is one thing, close range plus in range does mean that, you know, high, we could have looked at high speed ranged attackers, so I didn't really count for that. So that's something that I just learned there and just realized that was a mistake. But looking back on that, really, again, what I'm trying to do here is create dodges with high speed and with flying. And usually I would not use Chihuahua, usually I would use a uh, monster with high speed and a decent attack so that they can just keep dodging like a nightmare. However, Thorns and Chihuahua is so powerful with low mana battles at level one cards that I decided Chihuahua was more important than having a high speed monster there.